All right, what's going on everybody? Today we have an excellent video for you. Uh, we're going to be doing potency testing by HPLC um, in cannabis flower. Why do you call it flower? Because it's, 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 it's flower. It's flower. I'm here today <laughs> with Scott. Hello. Scott, what, what did you bring in? This is some of the worst. Dude, that was expensive. This is some of the worst cannabis I've ever seen. Scene. This That's rare. <laughs> yeah, because people don't normally put this in their bodies. But anyway, for demonstration purposes, it's fine. So um, the first thing you would want to do when testing for uh, cannabis is you'd want to homogenize your sample. So what that means is you want to get the sample, you want to smash it into little pieces. You know, no matter what you sample, it's a good representative sample of the rest of the, the, the batch. What we've done here is you can take a bag, you can put sample in there, freeze it, and then if you have a, a mallet, you can just kind of, you know, smash it up here until you get a nice fine powder for everything. If you had a, a cryogenic grinder, a ball mill, that also works great too. You know, you have like a tube, you put in some stainless steel balls, you put in the cannabis, bop, 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 it's gonna shake it up, it's gonna homogenize. Automatically? Or yeah, you do it yourself? it's an instrument. Maybe you could do it yourself, but mo <laughs> most people would require an instrument that would be sufficient. So, okay. so now enough. that you have um, a nice homogenized sample, the next thing to do is we want to weigh out about 200, 200 milligrams. 200. Okay, that sounds about right. First thing we want to do is Let me we... Do it. Check this out. <laughs> Why? You open both doors. <laughs> I'm sorry. So the first thing you'd want to do is you'd want to tear the weigh boat. So after tearing that, let's add about 200 mix. Here we go. All right. So that's about 200 mix. So close enough. Yeah, close enough. So then the next thing that you'd want to do is tear your centrifuge tube. Lab hack for you. Instead of trying to tear your centrifuge tube. Is it on? <laughs> instead of trying to tear your centrifuge tube like this or like this you know get a beaker put that in there and then boom you can tear it that way so now we've teared it and the next thing we'd want to do is we'd want to go ahead and add our 200 mg of sample in there we're gonna get our sample we're gonna go there all right and then we're gonna dilute up to 20 mils of methanol a hundredfold dilution. So we're gonna do. What does that mean? So basically, you have 200 mg over here. Mm -hmm. If you you top it off up to 20 mL of methanol, then you've essentially diluted the sample a hundredfold. So you made it a hundred times less concentrated. Now that we have our sample in the centrifuge tube, we want to dilute it up to 20 mL, and then we're gonna go ahead and dilute up to the mark. Whoa. Okay, and then when I'm getting pretty close, what I like to do is I like to use a, a transfer pipette, fine tuning. And then just to be certain, we can go ahead and, and just weigh it. And right, let's just weigh that, record the weight, All right? Make sure that's about 20 mils. You also have to make sure you factor in the density of methanol, 0.79 grams per mil, just for some of you out there. So let's vortex. You wanna do this for roughly 10 minutes. After you vortex for 10 minutes, Let's go ahead and, and dunk this in the centrifuge. So now that we have the sample spun down, we want to take a one mil of the sample and put it in a 15 mil centrifuge tube. So this one's set at one mil. See, so you can toggle that. Wow, that's cool. One mil of the sample, and then you want to put that in here. We want to top this off with nine more mils of methanol for a full 10x dilution. So the first step we did a hundredfold, and the second we did 10 for a total of a thousandfold dilution. All right, I mean, I'm using a, you know, a serological pipette right now to pipette nine mils, but probably the better way to go is if you had one of those bottle top dispensers and you put it over your methanol and you could just pull it up and get nine, nine mils or whatever your dilution is. It's much easier, but you know, I, I just need to get nine mils in there, so I'm just gonna use this. What is that? It's a, it's a serological pipette. So you can just get larger volumes. This is a 10 mil pipette. So let's get this up to nine. Oh, it's electronic? Yes. All right, so that's about nine. It's pretty good. So that's roughly 10 mils in there. And then we want to vortex and, and spin that down as well. So you could do the honors. Go ahead and vortex that. 
after you vortex that, you want to go ahead and get that into the centrifuge and make sure to balance it with another. Yep, there you go. Now that the sample is spun down, we want to take our syringe and we want to pull out, you know, a mil to two mils of our sample. And then we want to screw onto our PTFE syringe filter. We're using a pipe. 0.2 microns so we can get a cleaner sample, especially if you're using any UHPLC columns, you definitely want to use a 0.2 micron. We're going to get this into the vial for HPLC analysis. So I'm using amber because some of these cannabinoids are light sensitive. So yep, so there you go. It's filtered. And off to the HPLC we go. That's cool. To the next. Right. And then we'll talk about the conditions in a second. So when you're doing potency, you typically want to use a C18 column. We like the solid core type columns because they offer more efficiency in uh, a shorter column length um, as compared to fully porous columns. We're using a C18, 2.7 micron, 100 by 4.6. And we do recommend using a guard column. Uh, the column oven temp is 40 degrees Celsius. Injection volume is 5 microliters. We set the detector at 225 nanometers and the sample is diluted in 30% water and about 70% methanol. Uh, the mobile phase A is 0.1% formic in water and mobile phase B is 0.1% formic in acetonitrile. Flow rate is 1.5 mils a minute and we're doing a gradient. So we're starting with 80% A and ramping up to 80% B. And this, these are the typical results for the chromatogram. You may have to do some tweaks, but this is a good starting point. But you know, depending on the type of column that you get, you definitely need to tweak uh, the mobile phase conditions to get the proper separation. So let's calculate the percent concentration of cannabinoids in the sample. Our sample concentration of this compound is 0.05 mg per ml. Uh, our dilution factor was tenfold because we did 1 to 10 on the second part of the test. Our external volume, if you remember, was 20 mils of methanol and the dry sample weight was 200 mg. So if we multiply these together and multiply by 100 to get percentage, you'll see that we end up with roughly a 5% concentration of THC8. Potency is calculated by 0.877% of THCA plus the concentration of delta 9 THC. So the reason why it's 0.877 is you need a decarboxylate THCA. So that's where the, the extra percentage is lost. And when you add those two together, you get the total concentration of potency.